Hello traders, thank you for reviewing this video. I'm going to try to give you a brief introduction into our PFA order suite. Now the PFA order suite is an industry rate compatible and it is essentially an indicator which will load directly onto your chart. So as I said, I am going to try to keep this brief. I'm not going to dive into the settings and so on, but I will show you what they do. And uh, of course, all of the settings are explicitly covered in our documentation and very user friendly in our opinion. Okay, so if we take a look at the chart here, up in the top left, we can see a few icons, actually see four. Uh, the fourth one, however, is just to show and or hide the menu in itself. So if I left click, you can see how we can really clean that up a bit. If I left click it again, it brings our icons back readily available. So what are these icons? Well, number one, we're going to go from left to right. If I left click this icon on the left, the first of which is going to be our user inputs menu. The second is going to be the primary entry menu. And if you see there, we have the market as well as the account in which those orders are going to be submitted to. We'll talk about that in just a moment and why that's important. If we move to the right, the third icon, we can see there the secondary entry menu, again, followed by the market as well as the account. So to simplify, we have our settings and then we have our own uh, two order menus and we can submit orders to the same market, i.e. in this case the S&P futures, or we can actually submit orders from this market to any other market we desire. Now why would that be important? I'm just going to give you a quick example here. Maybe we want to utilize the e-mini S&P futures for our analysis because there's so many years worth of data but perhaps given account size or just my overall personality, I don't want to submit orders to the E-mini. I'd prefer to submit them to the micro E-mini. So we do have that capability. Currently, we have these both submitting to the default instrument. In this case, it is the E-mini. But as I notated in the settings, we can make those changes to whatever market we desire, as will be covered in the documentation and ongoing training, of course. So what's the purpose in the PFA order suite? If there was one basic thing I could say to sum it all up, it would be two words, time efficiency. There is, of course, more versions of efficiency outside of time, just convenience, if you will, so on and so forth. But again, overall, we just want to understand how our goal set here was and or is continuously. We want things to be very efficient. We want the information, the pertinent information that we feel we need, and we don't want to complicate things. Now, we've seen some great products out there, don't get us wrong, absolutely. But we prefer to keep things a little bit more simple, okay? So we'll walk through that and we'll see how simple and effective it can be. So let's say, uh, as a matter of fact, the markets are moving a little bit right now. We had a little bit of supply here this morning. Price is pushed down from it. So we're not gonna go into analysis or anything of, <clears throat> of that sort, but suffice to say, let's, let's just pretend for a moment that we are some version of market structure traders okay and i can see that the market's moving relatively fast right now so what i'm thinking to myself is on the low if we break this structure i want to be a seller okay this is of course very hypothetical but i want you to see how efficient we can be so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go left click I'm going to sell. Now, first and foremost, I want to decide, do I want to have a bracket order? Do I want to use a break-even trigger point within that bracket order? I can literally toggle those off with the left click of a mouse. But if I do want it, absolutely, I can turn that on. And if I want the bracket order, but I don't want to worry about a break-even trigger point, then I can simply remove that as well. But for the video purposes, we'll leave both of those on. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to left click sell entry. I can simply drag this very quickly, click submit. Now my entry is indeed done, okay? So this is just an example, but it can be moved anywhere we like. I just wanted to point out, what if price is moving relatively fast? I don't want to miss things and I don't wanna to have to go overthink this. What is my risk? So let's walk through that, okay? On each and every label, I have the number of shares, contracts, etc., that I'm going to be trading. I have, is this a short or long position being submitted? What is the market it is submitted to? The price value in which it will be submitted? 
and then we have risk and reward. Not only do we have risk and reward in currency, we also have it in ticks or pips as well. And finally, we have the account in which it will be submitted to. Now, what if I don't wanna trade 10 contracts? I can be, again, very efficient with this. I can reduce and or increase directly from the chart, okay? So if I wanted 12 contracts, I literally click the plus or minus button and I can reduce or increase. There is a setting with an increment value so if I am looking at say equity shares and I don't want to go one by one, so 11, 12, 30, what if I wanted to increment by 10, 20, 50, 100 and so on? I can make that alteration and each time I click the plus, it will be the corresponding setting. So if I've specified to increment by 50, well of course it would go, you know, 50, 100, 100 you know, so on and so forth, okay? All right, so here we're gonna go, we're gonna submit. Now for whatever reason, I may not want the desired trigger line and or profit target. Note these are specified in the settings. So right now we have the settings a one to one of our risk. So here you can see we have 42 ticks at risk and we want 42 ticks at a break even trigger value. And then our target destination we want at a two to one which is 84 ticks. But what if I wanted to make that based a little bit more on a dynamic version of maybe price action? I could scroll back over here and say, no, that's not how I want it. And I could unlink this. If you notice right there, the lines became, uh, instead of being solid, they're now dashed. And that means that it is unlinked at this point. So I can now move them accordingly, all right? And again, you know, no longer is it going to maintain the one-to-one, -one, two two-to-one, and so on risk calculations. It is overridden, so I can move those now manually, okay? What if I don't like what I've done? Well, I can go up, I can left-click cancel. There, I can left-click reset orders, and as you can see, everything gets re-initialized. So now I can pull this back down, and I say, you know what? I just wanna go with what I initially had. I can move uh, everything accordingly again, and then resubmit the orders. Okay, again, I can increment up or down, reset, and once I've submitted, you'll notice I now have a cancel button, okay? The other thing I wanna to touch on, let's go ahead and leave this at play, okay, as if I wanted to actually submit that order, but let's say that I wanted to play both sides of the market for whatever reason. Again, these are hypothetical, so um, everyone has their own trading personality, but for, for any reason, if I, if I said, you know what, I wanna play the break of this range, in other words, I want to sell the lows if we break out or buy the highs. So we have this secondary menu. I could go over here and essentially do the same thing except for not short, I want to, to buy and or go long. So I can left click buy. And then on the break higher, I could do something like this, okay? And I now have the option to buy. So if I go over here and submit that, Essentially, I'm playing both sides of the market right now. So if we break down, my sell entry is going to be filled. If we go up, my buy entry is going to be filled, okay? What's important is that I want to cancel the one uh, opposing. So if my buy entry up here gets filled, then I might wanna go down here and cancel out my sell entry, okay, and vice versa. The point being is that we have the capabilities of submitting both sides of the market simultaneously, okay? And again, another example is if I wanted to submit to a different market, I could keep my primary orders submitting here to the ES. I could specify I want my secondary orders to go to the micro ES. So that could be used for hedging purposes or just, you know, for, for whatever reason, again, there's a lot of uh, different trading personalities, but that is some functionality capabilities. Some of the other capabilities, let's turn these off to simplify the chart. Some of the other capabilities here would be multiple profit targets. As you can see here, we only have one. However, in the settings, we can specify up to three, how many contracts go within each, and so on. All right, um, so some other notable features here. Let's toggle the entry off. As I previously mentioned, we can toggle the OCO and break even directly from here. We also have what's called our entry zone. Notice here we have an up bar and a down bar entry. So think of these as more confirmation style entries. In other words, on the close of a bar, up or down, submit the entry. If I toggle the up bar entry, it's just gonna move with current price, okay? Now, I'm gonna toggle that back off 
And what if I said, I absolutely want to confirm, maybe get an up bar, but I don't want to take the up bar entry here. So I can then enable my entry zone. Once I turn that entry on, now notice that there is a zone or rectangle with it, okay? So I can take this down and I can say, you know, maybe I'm looking for previous support, all hypothetical depending on whatever your reasoning is. And then if I submit this, note we have our label down here, but the only way that that order is going to get executed is if it is within our entry zone, okay? So if we get an up bar and I take it up like this, then of course, yes, it would execute. However, if I reduce the size of the zone down to, with more specificity, it will not execute unless we get the corresponding up bar inside of the entry zone. Okay, so this is a more of a means of just, again, offering specificity, saying, no, I'd like to trade based on location. I want to maybe confirm an entry of sorts, but it has to be here. Um, so we're dictating price value and or rather dictating location of said price value before we're willing to take a trade. So hopefully that makes sense. If not, please let us know. We'll be happy to explain further. Again, we're doing ongoing sessions, so this, this all the training and we have the explicit documentation which covers these uh, for you as well. This is a brief video as mentioned in the very beginning. I just wanted to come in and kind of touch on some of the features uh, and to show you how efficient this can be. Remember, sometimes price moves really fast. So if I'm having to think about where I need my orders to be, what the risk is going to be, the currency as well as the ticks, etc., you know, it can be a little bit cumbersome. I need to be able to do this extremely fast. So if I go up here and I toggle this off, I say, you know what? I don't want anything. I don't want to, I don't want a bracket order. I don't want to use my entry zone. I literally just want to buy order. So I toggle those off and I submit my buy order. If I go submit it right now, order. you'll see how that happens, right? So I've now submitted an order, uh, but now what if I want to close that order out? Well, that was a long entry, okay? So now I need to go sell to close out my entry. So I'm gonna submit that, see if I can get a target order here, filled. and now I've hit my target just that fast. So again, time efficiency. We hope that you've enjoyed this video. You can see the capabilities. Uh, let me highlight a couple of things really quickly in conclusion. Number one, we can do this all directly from the chart. We can set our initial settings in the user inputs here and then we can do everything else on the fly. So we don't really need to continuously go into those settings. We basically just want to set it dependent upon our trading personality and then we can do quite everything directly from the order menu. I can submit orders with and or without OCO bracket orders as well as break even triggers. I can use an entry zone in order to define the specified location in order for those orders to execute and I can submit two bracket orders and or two orders in general okay by using two different entry menus and finally i can actually submit orders to a different market as opposed to the corresponding market in which i am on just by altering the setting to go to whatever the desired market may be so as i indicated earlier an example of that would be if i wanted to submit orders from the s p but i really wanted to focus a little bit more on a micro version. So this is very common across your futures markets down to your micro futures, or it could be if I'm trading an ETF and I wanna go hedge it with the futures, I could do that from the same chart and so on and so forth. So we, again, hopefully you enjoyed the video. God bless. We look forward to answering any questions that you may have based on the PFA order suite and or any other software or services we offer.